YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back in the Pergamon campaign. Sorry, I needed to tab out for a second, just make sure I was in the right screen on my broadcaster. Sometimes I forget what I did 10 seconds ago, which might explain why I misspelled Pergamonters. But I don't see why you all would even get on to me for that. I mean, you don't think Patchy can make up his own words or misspells words as he pleases? <laughs> Thanks for the call out. No, I'm just being sarcastic. All right, so I'll finally correct that. And then I think some of you are still screaming at me because Germania uh, Inferior or something is still untaxed on the Octavian campaign. And you are correct, I forget. And then I had some other comments that I was reading on my channel, which someone was like, hey, sorry to criticize, but they were all upset because I was running too much food and making these other mistakes. And no, it's fine. You can criticize. It's not going to bother me. But in answer to those criticisms, I will definitely read it when people have criticisms. And if it's something I feel like I could or should improve, I will. Um, but some criticisms, like someone saying, ah, oh, you have 100 food. It's, you know, it's terrible. It's, uh, it's really not good. And it drives me crazy. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it doesn't. But, um, I'm still making like 8,900 or almost 9,000 um, talents per turn on that campaign. It's it's quite all right. Uh, it's not going to hurt me. Could I make more? Absolutely. And are you right? Is it too much? Oh, yeah. I, I don't disagree with that. But um, I think uh, I just play them for fun. I do try and play it good, try and beat stuff. But at the same time, I need to have fun with the game or else it doesn't serve a whole lot of purpose for me. And if I'm not having fun with it, you all would probably enjoy it a lot less. Um, at least I think you would. Um, and to be honest, if you're looking for someone who's like a meticulous Total War gamer who gets everything right all the time, you've probably come to the wrong channel. Uh, I really can't provide that as it's not my not my forte. But again, though, I don't mean that to say that like, hey, don't criticize or don't give me some tips because I do read it and I've gotten a lot of good tips from you, like how to cycle through settlements faster, how to do buildings and stuff. So I guess bottom line, all I'm getting to is if you give me criticism and I don't follow it, please don't take offense. Um, or if you do give me criticism, um, there's a good chance that I probably will try and implement it, especially if it's something that I feel like will improve uh, both my ability to beat the game and um, your experience with it. So anyway, just throwing that out there again. So yeah, and, and you know, when you all people, when, when you criticize in such a way that you're, you're just like stating something that I can improve, uh, don't. You don't, you don't feel any need to apologize for it. I mean, there's there's not any need. Now, if you're going to criticize me, be like, Air, you're a big, fat, stupid crack, and you smell funny. Um, I'm not going to stop you from saying that. But if you start your criticism, you know, obviously I was being sarcastic. But, you know, if, you, if your criticism is along those lines before you get to the points that you want to make, then I'm probably not going to take you as seriously, not to say I won't read it. Um, but anyway, I think you get the point. And yeah, all I'm saying is feel free to, to criticize. Just uh, uh, if you do so politely, it makes me a lot less... Uh, or a lot more likely to see and understand your criticism and possibly implement it. And I sit here and say that the, the people who did criticize me have not done so impolitely. So that's not being inferred either. Anyway, I've talked enough about that. Let's move on. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I'm not ticking someone off because that was certainly not my intention. This patchy factory ticks me off, but it's only my own fault. Um, let's see. So I, I think as far as next moves, we should be in a good position to capture Tarsus. Um, I could probably go ahead and train a few more troops, even though my income's not particularly high at Amasia, and try and use them to push against Samosata. Um, but then I have this army that probably won't need to stick around at Mazaka forever either. So we'll kind of just figure it out. I am still at war with the Cappadocians, though they're not in a very good position to easily attack me. Uh, so we'll kind of play that by ear. In fact, we, well, I don't want to spend a ton of money doing that at the moment. Where is my spy? Right here. How may I serve? Uh, still harassing these leftover Galatians, I guess. There's probably not a whole lot of point in sabotaging these guys. I don't have any movement points there. Uh, I guess there is a point in sabotaging them just to keep them from being able to move very far, which should be helpful in the end at trying to help me contain them. I think I'm going to wait just one turn before I go assault. Um before I go assault Tarsus. Would be nice to be able to get archers. I, I may try and construct a building that'll help me get archers. Uh, I feel like they would be more useful to me at the moment. Let's, oh, I need to set up a technology to be researched as well. So let's see what this would do. Eh, minus two corruption. Wouldn't hurt in the long run, but not a big deal right now. Slight increase to my tariffs. Enable some extra buildings. Building construction costs. Don't see that going a long ways for me at the moment. Finishing this could be useful in the late game. 
And it gives me a little extra replenishment. That's a possibility. Just trying to take a look at some of these. I rarely use this type of building chain. Maybe I should look into it more. Maybe I should be using it. And then boiling oil is not going to matter because AI never tries to burn the gates anymore. Those days are over, I guess. Siege tower, attritional losses when besieging. I mean, that could potentially be helpful, taking less losses when besieging. So let's go ahead and research that. And let's go ahead and end the turn. Guess I'm taking my time thinking about some of that. Sorry that there's not going to be an online battle today as well. I do apologize for that. I have not had time to get one. I've been in the process... Did Athens just land on my shores? Bound by treaty, our lands would be as trireme and sail. Indivisible, strong, powerful. What say you? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't even know why I said no. I think just to be a jerk. Uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry I didn't get an online battle. I haven't had a chance to play it. Uh, or to play any, sorry, at the moment. Because I have been in the process of trying to get a big old project approved at work, which is kept me exceedingly busy um, so it's not to say that things are gonna grind to a halt or it's gonna change no it's just a couple of busy days it should be going back to normal meaning I should be able to get in some decent recording time tomorrow I also just received my new RAM and solid-state drive so I need to get that installed not that you're probably gonna really see a difference on your end it'll probably be more of a difference for me as far as maybe getting a little better loading times and stuff um, but yeah, uh, new graphics card will come sometime next year before Attila, which again, some of you have pointed out, Air, you don't even need one. I'm sure I don't, um, just to make sure that my computer's up to snuff. Uh, the whole reason I went out and did kind of like a build my own computer was just so that I would be able to kind of piecemeal upgrade things um, as I needed to in order to try and keep my computer consistently up to date uh, was kind of the idea. Spikes! So anyway... Militia! You all give me some advice about that from time to time, which I very much appreciate, because a lot of you know more about computer hardware than I do. I would not claim that that is my area of expertise. But another reason why the upgraded graphics card would be nice, as long as some of the other stuff, is because right now, I can definitely run on like the Ultra Unit settings, and it's not too bad, but I would like to run on the Ultra Unit settings on Attila, and just make sure that there's no lag, and I can still bring it to you at 60 FPS. Um, so another reason why I would even consider looking for a new graphics card at the moment whenever my graphics card is quite capable. So, and then someone sent a comment, Eric, can I have your old graphics card? <laughs> you know, to be honest, I wouldn't mind giving it to someone. The problem is, is I have to pay to ship it, and especially if it needed to go overseas, that would be extraordinarily expensive, and I don't really have the stuff to ship it in. Um, I don't think I have any of the original box or like anti-static type stuff to put it in, so you probably wouldn't want me to ship it to you because it's going to become destroyed. Yeah, if I could do stuff like that, I would. I've, I mean, I've even considered it at times, uh, um, kind of how I could do some, some prize giveaways and stuff like that with y'all. The, the difficulty is the logistics of it, which is funny because I'm a logistics engineer. Um, so it's just very expensive, I think, in the end, is what it, what it all comes down to. Very expensive. Okay, I'm going to put my Militia Hoplites over here to block this way. Looks like the AI is not going to be quite as stupid this time. It's going to try to come in from multiple directions. Which is unfortunate for me, but smart for them. Pretty sure my Militia Hoplites can handle these Eastern Spearmen quite easily. So I'm not really worried about that fight at all. Uh, looks like maybe some more units possibly going to come their way. Cappadocian Cav is the general. My main concern is my pikemen aren't going to be able to fully fill this gap up here. So I'm going to get my general ready to fill in any holes that get Kree taken advantage of here. I mean, the AI is not going to have a lot of room to maneuver, but I do want to try and keep my pikes in deeper ranks so that they don't get penetrated too badly by the enemy um, infantry. Because pikes in very thin ranks can start succumbing to losses from enemy infantry. But see, the AI will ch try this. See how they've come around my flank with that Cappadocian Cav? They, they definitely try it, and it sometimes works quite well for them. 
but you can use units like I am with my general here to kind of hold them at bay. And these mobs are going to have to hold the Eastern Spearmen at bay for the time being. Uh, there's no reason for you to be firing at those guys. Let's just turn back around here. Those Eastern Slingers are actually superior to my men. And actually, let's... Let's bring these plebs back over here for a minute. Got a plan. My pikemen ought to be just fine there. Let's use my uh, cavalry to run a quick charge. We'll just cycle charge these Eastern Spearmen to death. My own guys are in the way for the first charge, so it probably won't be super helpful. But my general ought to be quite capable when it comes to just charging an Eastern Spear unit. Eastern Spearmen, you would think, hey, they're good against cavalry. No, they're not. They're bad against pretty much everything. My general is under fire from those Eastern Slingers, though, and that's pretty annoying because it absolutely will uh, make a difference in the end. These Eastern Spearmen are not braced, so I'm going to charge them again. And I'm going to get a lot of kills. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull through. It's going to give me a few losses, but I don't think the Eastern Spearmen can hold me, and that'll help me get away from those Slingers that are shooting at me as well. Well, that's always a good thing. Yeah, my Pergamine Noble Cap got through those Eastern Spearmen with minimal losses. And we can start shooting at these Slingers, and these two mob can try and come keep these Eastern Spearmen pinned while I turn around for another charge. So there is, like, a few Cappadocian Cavalrymen who have managed to get through my lines. Not really sure how that worked, but it, it should be okay. And it looks like my, uh, my mob is getting beat down by Eastern Spearmen. It's about the only thing Eastern Spearmen can can uh, bring down because they stink. <laughs> they're the fighting pajama men of Rome 2 and now they're the dead fighting pajama men of Rome 2 as they are in almost every battle in which they're involved. So yeah, those guys are dead. And let's see, my slings can now focus on the eastern slingers. My pikemen are just getting destroyed by eastern slinger fire so I'm going to retreat behind this building. There are some more Eastern Spears trying to make their way towards me. Yeah, my pikemen are just getting absolutely annihilated. Okay, my slingers. Let's go off fire at will because I don't want to shoot my own general. And let's get another Pergamine Noble Cav charge down the streets here. We're going to go run down these uh, Eastern Slingers. These guys are now dead meat. Yeah, you see the back of him getting charged into. It's pretty sweet. Unit cam doesn't work real good when your guys get broken up, but it's still kind of a fun way to get in here and see some of the action. The enemy slingers are going to try, of course, to retreat and continue to fire. The, battle is turning in our the AI actually does some things fairly good. We complain about it a lot, and don't get me wrong, it's because it's, strategically speaking, can't do much very well. But uh, the AI really is um, much improved over what I've seen in past games. Now, people are like, "Eh, when this game released, the AI was awful. It was beyond awful. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I'm, I'm going to agree with you there. It had lots and lots of bugs. But honestly, I've never seen the AI put up such a good fight in some positions as it does in Rome 2. Now, is Air sitting here saying that the AI is great? No, I'm not sitting here saying the AI is great. I'm just saying that it's the, probably the best I've ever seen it. I remember in Shogun 2, it would do all kinds of stupid things where you could uh, basically trick their archers into climbing the walls and getting slaughtered by your melee troops. You could <clears throat> use your bow cavalry to bring one unit of an enemy army at a time out, just shoot them to death because they would camp on hills and stuff. I mean, so there's lots of ways to, I mean, just really take advantage of the AI in, in Shogun 2. And I'm not saying that there aren't ways in Rome 2. It just seems like it's been improved somewhat. And I forgot to look and see where that Athenian army came ashore at. Seeks to adopt one of my characters. Oh, really? You want me to spend 7,500 talents to stop my guy from being adopted? I hate you. I, I literally hate this. Like, why does it do this? Like, I got a prize, obviously, because I wouldn't have had this much money otherwise. And now you're going to take all my money by making me stop an adoption. Freaking. Ugh. Go to heck. That's all I got to say about that. Rot. Absolutely rot, you scum dirtbags. Make me spend all my money on that crap. Now I got absolutely no money this turn. And some of you be like, Air, why didn't you just let him get adopted? I don't know. I don't even know how the politics works, I guess. But I didn't feel like letting him get adopted. Where was that Athenian army? I swear I saw an Athenian army coming ashore somewhere. The little owl thing. That's Athenian, right? 
And it seemed like it was coming in amongst some... Hmm. I didn't get any trespass warnings. Here's F and I. Hmm. Ah, there they are. They're down at Nassos. And if they are at war with Nassos, then this is the reason why I haven't been trying to... Yeah, they are at war with Nassos. Um, I've got a trade agreement with Nassos, but I haven't been making any military agreements with them because of this very reason. Uh, because it would make Athens and Sparta hate me even more than they already do, which is quite a lot. And I haven't been able to get Athens to get a trade agreement Be with welcome. me. Probably because if I, I once made a trade answer, agreement with Epirus, which generally makes them angry. So, yep, Athens and Sparta are still really no friends of mine. But that's okay. I don't really care if they're my friend. Let's see, so Mazaka... Oh, great! I spent all my money on that, and now I get patchy factories. I'm going to have to cancel construction of some of this other stuff in order to get some money back. Because I'm about to have more patchy factories than I can handle. And sweet. Wouldn't you know that's the only construction I can cancel? Maybe that one. Oh, good. That got me a little bit of money back, too. Well, piece of horse crap. So, we need to just get this filled with cheap and useful stuff here. Oh, this is going to be bad. Can I build enough buildings to avoid the patchy factories? Fortunately, the answer is yes. Which, that is a fortunate answer indeed. So, alright. Crisis managed. Managed to take care of that. Let's see here. Faltering supplies. One of your magistrates is claiming the lands are barren, the harvest has failed, and the farmers worry that the same will happen next year. Well, the farmers need to shut up and farm harder. Though that doesn't appear to be an option here, so I guess we'll go with... Um, fertilize. Spread the manure, men. Spread the manure. There should be plenty of it left over after my Parthian campaign. So, let's see. Don't know if y'all got that joke or not, but if you did, hopefully it was at least to some degree entertaining. If not, you can boo and throw stuff at the screen, I suppose, because it's just your computer screen. Um, let's go ahead and see. Wow, 19 units. They get four hillmen. One pikeman, two citizen calf, four levy pikemen. That is a considerable number of men that are going to be garrisoning this town here. Two citizen cav and five units of pikes, four units of hillmen. I don't doubt that I could beat these units on open ground, but if they send the reinforcing army, it might get trickier. Plus, my Pergamene noble cav is replenishing, so we might want to wait that one out again. Sorry that it's kind of anticlimactic for me to not be invading, but... I may just want to kind of hold my ground for a few turns and make sure I don't overextend myself to the point of stupidity. I may have already done so, but we'll hope not. I sure do hate the fact that Rhodes has pessimist as well. That kind of irritating, but it could be worse. As long as it's a Hellenic faction, it won't hurt me too bad from a public order standpoint. Will potentially keep me from issuing edict, which can be annoying, but it's manageable. Nassos looks like it could potentially defend itself against Athens, though I see either a large fleet or a large army that's away from home, and that may come back to bite him in the rear. Looks like one of my generals has already died because this particular campaign is on a one turn per year. So yeah, it was this other general who was actually just acting as a statesman for now, so that shouldn't be any huge factor in the campaign. I can now go ahead and convert this structure. And where else did we need to convert some barbarian buildings? Right here we did. Yeah, these catchy tunes. You gotta love the Rome 1 music. Okay. So, really nothing else that has to be built at the moment. Man, that big question in my head is, should I or should I not siege Tarsus? I should probably... I sure want to, but it would also be helpful if my attritional lashes when besieging get lower. 
pre-siege, siege tower. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to go siege a city with that much stuff, I probably ought to be more well prepared to, to handle it when we get there. And this may give me a few turns to just try and focus on finishing some buildings, which could potentially be more useful. And also using my agents to level up troops. This agent's actually pretty good at uh, the military training that he can impart to units. And of course, again, they're not going to live forever uh, like they do on the four turn per year campaigns, it seems. I definitely like four turn per year better. But uh, this one, you know, obviously I started it before those mods could be made available, and it's honestly not a big deal. Uh, we'll just play it this way, and it'll be something different, kind of see if it changes things for me. A treaty between us would please the gods. Boy, you really want I a non-aggression no fact. Uh, I just don't see the use in it at this point. No, oh, I didn't know I had a city that was undefended up there. Oh, that general died. How convenient. How convenient. That's the cavalry unit that I very much needed here. So I guess we're going to get to fight this battle all over again against the stupid Cappadocians. Really got to go kill these guys, as they've become kind of an infernal nuisance at this point. I should still be able to beat these guys back as long as I get into the right position. The AI is going to have to attack me. They haven't even split their troops this time. This is definitely the narrowest street right here. So I'm going to just run on the idea that I can put my pikes right here. And then put my militia hoplites uh, back here just a little ways. Uh, you know, the other thing we should do is actually just move these guys back a little so that the enemy slingers don't have a very good Militia! line of sight, but then that kind of that kind of widens up the area that my Militia Hoplites have to protect. Should be okay, though. Slingers! I don't know if this is a really good strategy or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, so at least that kind of makes the angle the slingers have to come in from a little more challenging. And I do have my mob units. I'm just going to hide them somewhere here in the back of, back of town. Just don't want the AI to see them. If we are victorious and live, I will sacrifice to Zeus and Ares for their favor and help in our defense. Okay, let's see what the AI decides to do here. We must do our parts as well. Fight with honor and all will be if they split up, I should still be okay because I can defend both sides in this narrow alleyway. It's not a victory point. They can capture the capture point, I suppose, but it's not a victory point. And it appears the AI is just going to ignore me, and... Well, they were going to ignore me. They are going to ignore me. Now they're not going to ignore me. They can't decide what they're going to do, apparently. Well, so much for my little discussion on how the AI has improved. Now, how are they Our flinging those stones attack. around the corner? That is that is definitely a new one on me. Yeah, speed. that that crow doesn't caw. I'm not gonna sit here and let you fling rocks around the corner at me, you freaking butt cracks. Militia. Quick march! Marching order! Slingers! By your command! I'm gonna get my slingers to fire at those slingers and then bring my pikemen up here. Since all the AI infantry and cavalry come from one way and the, the slingers have come from another. So my slingers should be able to. In fact, I'm gonna take my slingers and just chase these guys off real quick to keep them from shooting the back of my men. Yeah, that ought to work. I just don't want those Eastern Slingers to be able to get at my men. And there are more Eastern Slingers over here, unfortunately. Okay, now I'll just train my Slingers in and start firing at the Eastern Slingers. Looks like we're going to have a point-blank sling fight here. Eastern Slingers are better units. So, definitely better units. They have shields and everything as well. 
And the freaking enemy slingers are actually hurting my militia hoplites quite badly. But look at this. Those butt cracks are ignoring my slingers and shooting over my back. As you come on. Quick I had enough of this. Understood. You won't learn. I'm going to get into those Cappadocian cavalry. Take these guys out of formation attack so I can push a little. Look at this. They're, they're st they were trying to fire over the backs of my men. Now they're going to actually fire at my own slingers. See this point blank sling to the face? <laughs> That's funny. That's good times, folks. That is good times. They're sitting here mowing my own slingers down, even though my point blank fire is doing almost nothing to them. The men are wavering. So much to the point that my men are now wavering. My pikemen are doing quite well, but if they keep getting hit by slingers, they're not going to last forever. I don't really want to get into melee combat with these guys either, in particular, but I guess I will. My militia hoplites would do fine here, really. It's just that these, again, the eastern slingers are picking at them and it's hurting their morale. My pikemen are doing fine, but I mean, pikemen are pikemen. They can't kill for crap against any unit. Let's see if we can start forcing my pikemen forward into killing more of these. Sometimes if you just keep giving attack orders, yep, just lost my man, so I'm probably going to lose this. This is not going to go well for me in the end. Because I have no way to deal with the enemy slingers at this point. Yes, I mean, you can just see that pikes are just screwy. Only 15 of the Cappadocian Cab died, and my Slingers are winning that melee fight. Not impressively, but they're winning it. Come on, you lazy pikemen. Cut those Eastern Spearmen down. see so yeah I mean the the pikening just takes way too long in this game it's very difficult to make them handy now these slingers are free at this point so once they win this fight I should be able to get them behind these other eastern slingers and try and get some shots I guess it's possible I can still pull this off but I mean all those slingers around definitely worry me kill those eastern slingers please My pikemen are getting a considerable number of kills, it's just that the enemy troops aren't wanting to rout. Let's bring these slingers over this way. If these two eastern spearmen would just go ahead and break, that would be very helpful. And then I can keep pushing up. Got one of them routing. I'm up to 182 kills on my, my pikemen, that's certainly admirable. And again, if we can use these slingers to draw some fire away from my general, we should might actually be able to pull it off since the AI is not really being aggressive enough here to destroy my pikemen. Are these eastern spearmen ever going to rout? I mean, they've been wavering for like the last few years. Okay, now these eastern spearmen are going to come chase my slingers, which is both good and bad. Good because they can't fight my infantry, but bad because I need them to be shooting at the enemy slingers. Because now the enemy slingers are actually getting a few shots off here and there on my pikemen, and the slingers are going to be the biggest threat. Uh, one of the eastern spearmen came back from routing, which is fantabulous. I'm just going to put these guys on skirmish. All right. Well, let's see if we can just push our way through the rest of these Eastern Spearmen. <laughs> but see, even when my guys push them like that, they're they're still not taking losses. And 
and the enemy slingers are pretty much going to be free to fire at my men, especially now in the back. I am firing into the back of their eastern slingers though, we'll see if that does any good. It's still quite some range, unfortunately. Let's see, is Pikeman up to 225 kills? If the enemy general cavalry comes into the front of me, that would actually be helpful here. The enemy slingers don't really have a great line of sight, which is also helping me. Who knows? We'll see. It's possible that luck might find a way for me here. And just due to the general crappiness of eastern slingers. Uh, though my own slingers are apparently pretty crappy too because I'm shooting their slingers in the back and still barely getting any kills. Let's see if we can kill the enemy general here before my pikemen come down from rear attacks. The enemy slingers are now dying. I think I'm going to target these uh, eastern spearmen actually and see if I can get some of them off my back. The enemy general is actually going down pretty badly, but now my morale just dropped a lot. can now turn and attack these spearmen, so maybe take away the attack from the rear penalty here. But it's quite possible that those Cappadocian Cav are going to try and turn on me as well. Oh, come on, General, you're doing fine. If you just quit trying to porcupine here. Do you all mind turning around, please, so you're not attacked in the rear? Alright. My slingers are doing some damage. Well, now my slingers are under fire too, but hey, as long as they're taking... Yes, please push. 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 Come on, you can do it. I believe. I believe! Alright, well, we actually killed those Eastern Spearmen. Okay, my general stabilized. So I can now start attacking their slingers. If this Cappadocian Cavalry General just die. <laughs> that would be fantabulous. Orders understood. It's Come for glory. Okay. Now this is where it's going to get tricky. Oh, I've still got my plebs. Forgot Fight about me. them. They could actually come in very handy. I have to chase them though, or else the slingers will definitely start firing at me. Alright, this is actually quite good what's happening here, the AI is making a kind of a boneheaded mistake. Ah, my slingers killed the enemy general! Dude, talk about luck. That's the type of luck I've been counting on. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to get into these Eastern Slingers, and I'm going to try and get back around here to catch these Eastern Slingers as they flee. It's kind of a long run, though, so we'll see whether or not we get it. Oh, sweet. I sh don't know if I have enough ammo to completely finish this Cappadocian Cav, but we'll try. Oh, we actually routed those Eastern Slingers, too. Spectacular. And the enemy Cappadocian Cav routed, so I actually think we have this one. I'm kind of surprised that the last unit of Slingers isn't routing without a general or any other troops on the battlefield, but I guess the numbers are kind of keeping them here since my number of men is so few. I can't believe we ended up winning this. I thought I had pretty much bossed it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my men in the pike phalanx again, see if we can help speed the passing of these wretched eastern slingers. The battle is turning in our favor. And there we go, folks. Managed to do the same city defense twice, except this time without the aid of some nice Pergamene noble cav. So I'd say that was a pretty lucky experience for me there. Managed to kill most of those guys too, but I'm sure they'll be back with another crap army, which is the reason why I need to get to work and go kill Cappadocia. Hopefully you all have enjoyed this. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.